decades of experience uh, in trying to improve the life of the detainees as well as helping the authorities to uh, best manage and uh, operate their prison system. Also, when we enter a prison, the first obvious persons to meet will be the prisoners, the detainees. And then, by proximity, by discussion, we try to see how they are, how they're doing. Uh, more specifically, do they get all the essential services that they should? Then we walk around the prison. And for instance, we will see the water points. Where do they get their safe drinking water? Uh, these water points, are they enough for the number for all the prisoners? Um, the quality also, we we'll try to make sure that uh, the quality is good, uh, safe for drinking. Um, and one point not to neglect is, does the prisoner have access all the time or sufficient time to this water point? Is the kitchen clean enough uh, so that the food is prepared in a safe manner and not contributing to spread diseases? Uh, on that, we will try to work with the detainees who are often the ones working in the kitchen and the authorities to see if whatever solution we bring is acceptable. We have in uh, some countries introduced uh, biogas. We can save up to 20, 30 percent sometimes, which is valuable money. And this money can be used elsewhere, for instance, to buy medicine or to pay the water bill. Anything that enters a prison must get out of the prison, and this in a safe way. Otherwise, if we don't have sanitation facilities, the toilets, the latrines, the showers, that evacuate in a safe way, uh, they will start contaminating the whole environment of the jail. At this stage, the water source might be as good as it can, but it will be contaminated soon as we fetch it. We have, for instance, crisis where cholera uh, appears in one prison, and mostly due to contamination of the water source, also perhaps the food, uh, because hygiene could not be secured enough, and it can spread like wildfire in a prison. Um, also, if the sewage potentially uh, transporting diseases, it's not done properly, this disposal, the surrounding population also can be contaminated. By looking at the needs of detainees, there are many, many different ones. Uh, one person must eat, one person must sleep, one person must uh, drink water. There are different subgroups. If we look, for instance, at the minors, we must make sure that they're separated from the adults. If we look at the women in prisons, they have specific needs. We try always to find pragmatic solutions that are adapted to the context that the authorities can afford after uh, whatever technical option was chosen. We also work at regional and national level to see if, the, for instance, the Department of Finances has all the information required to release the funds. If the Ministry of Justice, for instance, is aware of what's happening in the jails, so what we observe often is that the situation can be quite chaotic in extreme situations and we will perhaps say act as an in-between or perhaps as a driving belt during a certain period. The population grows in general, therefore the number of detainees as well. And the investment in the prison system uh, was not done accordingly. So when we talk about overcrowding, it's many, many, many aspects. If the courtyard is not big enough, they will not be able to go and have a minimum of exercise outdoors. If we look at overcrowding, we can also imagine the staff themselves. Uh, we also have to go and look at what are their working conditions. If they don't even have a proper office where they can do their paperwork, that they can do a proper filing of each individual detainee's uh, case. And we saw in many cases, unfortunately, that uh, many of those files are destroyed because of some flood or even rodents sometimes eating those files. Uh, so these are aspects that are not negligible. If we want to look at that prison, uh, we couldn't look at it as from three pillars, let's say. We would have, obviously, the necessity to have a proper building and proper infrastructure. 
good dimensions. We would need, obviously, staff, staff that is qualified, that know what they have to do. And the third one, we need money, we need budget, we need a financing system. The ICRC detention teams will witness many times very dramatic humanitarian situation. The ultimate goal, the ultimate objective, is really that the needs of the detainees, uh, physical, psychological, are met, and that in all dignity.